Welcome to the first episode of the Biology 2402 Lab online, and we're starting off with the endocrine system. My name is Dan O'Connell. Pleased to meet you. Uh, well, our first unit, we'll look at the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, which you can see here on this screen. And let me show you a few things. The hypothalamus is this region on this model right here in red, that circle. The anterior pituitary or adenohypophysis is this portion right here. And the posterior pituitary or neurohypophysis is back here. So uh, on this um, microscope slide image on the right, they are reversed. So it doesn't not one's not to the left or to the right. So this is number two in this case is neurohypophysis and number one is adeno. And you can tell on the microscope slide image that the uh, anterior pituitary is darker. So that's repeatable. If you see a slide the, and you recognize it as the pituitary, which this image is pretty typical, uh, you'll be able to know that it's the anterior. So darker part is the anterior, lighter parts the uh, neural. Now the hypothalamus produces some hormones which it stores uh, in the posterior pituitary and it transports those guys down this these red marks here on this model called the uh, hypothalamic hypophyseal tract and it's a bunch of blood vessels and and neurons so the uh, hypothalamus up here makes for for our purposes two hormones it makes a bunch more but we're not going to get into those and those are being, those are oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone which we will detail in uh, the subsequent uh, powerpoint uh, slides the hypothalamus is phenomenally important uh, and does way more things than we can get into in uh, the lab. So for our purposes, just know it produces oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone. Those get to the neurohypophysis, which store them, and then the neurohypophysis will release them later as needed. Uh, they do lots of other jobs, as you see there. Now let's go to the anterior pituitary because it's the glandular portion of the pituitary. It makes its own uh, hormones, and we will go over six of them here. Six may seem like a lot, but uh, it does a lot of other things as well. So there we see the name adenohypophysis. Now you'll notice that there's terms in orange. So what I've tried to do is that put terms in orange that are in the lab study guide. So if you see them in orange somewhere, and I'm, I can't guarantee I'll be 100% on this, but if you see them in orange, you'll you'll know that they're that they're there. So read all the stuff, all right? Study the stuff, uh, make sure you, you commit it to memory, use your study guide, uh, and use the atlas at the back of the study guide to uh, to visualize the information. But uh, but go and, you know, go through my videos, the other videos and other uh, and images that you have access to, all right? And so let's get a move on here. Uh, so growth hormone, that's one of them. I want you to know how to, you know, the name of the hormone. If you want to abbreviate it, that's okay. But if I put growth hormone out there, you, you might, you don't just throw a question mark over your head, not, not having memorized the name of the, of the hormone. So this, as it indicates, as the name indicates is, uh, uh, helps you grow. You produce a lot of it when you're a kid, uh, causes mitosis and uh, general anabolism. So increase of size of molecules. Uh, you may have heard of growth hormone in do doping in sports where people will inject it so that they can they can grow as adults, you know, get bigger muscles. And it also makes your skull bones and jaw bigger in your hands and if you if you have it as an adult. So here we see uh, what overproduction can cause. It's called gigantism in children. So you, they grow, but proportionally pretty much. So you can get really big uh, if you reach adulthood it's called acromegaly if you're continuing to produce it because it you don't you most of your bones won't grow normally they'll get thicker and your some of your dermal bones will grow you'll get big hands your shoe size will go and your hat size will get bigger underproduction as a child can cause uh, pituitary dwarfism and that's a one particular cause of small stature you rarely start it in adulthood but it can cause some lethargy and some other stuff Here's a mouthful, adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH. Uh, this, the terminology here you're not gonna know yet, but it stimulates a region of the adrenal gland, specifically the cortex called the zona fasciculata. We'll get to that later on another PowerPoint. And as you can see, it causes the release of 
release of glucocorticoids, especially cortisol, and these are going to help control blood sugar levels, as will be uh, detailed in a later uh, video. So here's some disorders. Overproduction of uh, ACTH can cause a there's a lot of things it can cause, but here's just two. Cushing syndrome, which is a, you get the obesity, sort of a rounded face with extra fat under the skin, uh, excess sweating, and a number of other uh, symptoms. Underproduction can cause, it's called Addison's disease, which has that list of uh, interesting, a uh, hyperpigmentation. So uh, a light-skinned person that would get Addison's disease would uh, look like they do a really a load of fake tanning. All right, luteinizing hormone. We're still in the anterior pituitary, as you can see. So luteinizing hormone, or LH, targets ovaries and testes. So it targets your gonads, and it is going to stimulate in the ovaries, and, in the ovaries, I should say, ovulation, which is the release of an oocyte uh, during that process, and the formation of what's called a corpus luteum, which makes a lot of a female's estrogen and progesterone um, to maintain the uterine lining, but that'll be, again, that's for a later PowerPoint. That noise you may have heard in the background was my turtle. It also stimulates testosterone production in males. Uh, moving on, follicle stimulating hormone, again, targets the gonads, uh, stimulates the follicle. Now the follicle is the thing that actually grows with, uh, that grows the, uh, the oocyte within it. I'm gonna draw one here, I'll attempt to anyway. So if if this is an ovary, you'd have this follicle, which is a little chamber in there, and then you'd have a little o, a little oocyte. Oh, eh, that was great, wasn't it? Looks like I escaped out of there. Anyway, you'd have a little oocyte in that uh, in that follicle. All right, I'll just move on. Oh, in males, it helps with sperm formation and the formation of the uh, original cells that are responsible for sperm. Uh, two more hormones, and the last two, as it turns out, prolactin, and which is easy to say. This one targets the mammary glands. So now what it does is it makes females produce milk. Another hormone we'll see later causes the milk to be ejected, but this is the, the one that, that stimulates the mammary glands to make milk. Also, it stimulates maternal behavior. Now that's like caring for the child and, and uh, traits like that. It causes a decrease in sex hormones in both sexes, respectively, right? And estrogen for females and testosterone for males. And uh, moving on to thyroid stimulating hormone, stimulates the thyroid. So don't get thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, and thyroid hormone, TH, mixed up. Thyroid stimulating hormone produced by the anterior pituitary stimulates the thyroid gland into making thyroid hormone. Moving on to the posterior pituitary. Now this is that part, it's posterior, so it's in back of the anterior one, called the neurohypophysis, and it, notice here that it's not technically a gland. It doesn't make, it, make its own hormones. It's only gonna receive them from the hypothalamus and then release them as needed. There's only two, oxytocin, which is an interesting one, this uh, has many different functions. Kind of the ones you're probably familiar with are uterine contractions, and you may have heard it called tocin. I think that might be a, a brand name of it, but oxytocin is produced. Uh, you make it yourself, and you, uh, you, it causes menstruation, in a, so uterine cramping. So you can blame oxytocin if you're, if you're getting cramps, uh, but labor also. Interestingly, it also targets the mammary glands. This is that other hormone I was mentioning that, that causes milk ejection. So you need prolactin and oxytocin to feed the baby. And then the last characteristic here is, is kind of neat. It causes uh, bonding. So if you snuggle with your sweetie pie, you're gonna get increased oxytocin levels and form a bond kind of. It works with your dog. <laughs> so if you pet your dog, both you and your dog bond with each other. And uh, it works on, uh, you know, football teams and whatever, groups of friends and stuff as well. Last slide for this first PowerPoint, uh, anti-diuretic hormone. So a diuretic is something that makes you lose water. 
antidiuretic stops you losing water. And our main route of water loss is urine. So one of the targets is kidney tubu tubules, which ADH causes the salt and urea to be reabsorbed, which then draws the water back into your, into your tissues. So you, you really limit your urine volume when you're producing uh, antidiuretic hormone. You might expect, as you might expect, you produce more of it if you're already thirsty. If you're dehydrated, you're going to make anti, you're going to produce more uh, antidiuretic hormone to, to cut off that water loss. Uh, there is a disorder called diabetes insipidus. It's not the same as diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is the one that deals with blood sugar levels, and I'll talk about that later. But the diabetes insipidus is uh, when you underproduce ADH, you're going to lose a lot more water than you're supposed to. So you're going to constantly urinate and be thirsty all the time and drink a lot of water. You have to wake up many times during the night and uh, to drink water and urinate. Well, that's uh, been my first attempt. Let's uh, see how it goes. If you're hearing this right now, it means that I listened to it and didn't find it terrible. Stay tuned for the next video.